Truth was lost and hearts were frozen From you Allah came a prophet chosen Blessed prophet Muhammad obedient to you Taught us the things we ought to do He taught us for certain that you are one And that you have neither a daughter nor son He taught us to be good to our mother and father And that paradise lies under the feet of our mother I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise And follow your sunnah, prophetic ways I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise And follow your sunnah, prophetic ways Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Welcome to our program, Back to the Prophet. In this program, we discuss the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, but especially his life example and how that can better inform us as Muslims so that we may understand our religion and apply it in our own daily lives, inshallah, God willing. Today we're going to be discussing the Hijra. In the Hijra is a very important and crucial event in the history of Islam. It is the migration of the Prophet and his companions to al Medina. As we discussed in previous episodes, the darkest years of the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, began with what is called the year of grief or the year of sorrow with the death of his beloved wife Khadija and then his uncle Abu Talib. With that, the Prophet Muhammad really felt uh, in his heart perhaps that his mission of mercy to the world would never reach fruition in his lifetime. He was already 50 years of age and it looked like his entire prophethood up until that time had resulted in very little tangible progress. Yet it was very shortly thereafter that Allah Almighty bestowed upon the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him, the great gift of Isra and Miraj, the night journey to Jerusalem and the ascension to heaven. And that uh, strengthened the Prophet's resolve and he was very committed and assured by Allah that success of his mission was soon to follow. The Prophet still struggled to convey his da'wah, his message, his message. And that was his focus. Every pilgrimage, every time there was a trade fair, or merchants or visitors came to Medina, he would go to people and say, who will convey, take me to their people and protect me so that I may convey my message? And it's very important for us to understand the Prophet was not looking to be a ruler or to head a state necessarily, but he was looking for someone who would protect his message. But he was rejected over and over again because Quraysh, would go to visitors and say, beware of that madman, he is a magician, he will hypnotize you, cast his spill upon you, and divide you from your people. But the Prophet didn't give up. And unbeknownst to anyone, there were people who were visiting Medina who paid attention to the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad especially visitors from a city to the north called Yathrib. Yathrib was an exception to the rule. Unlike Mecca and most other areas in Arabia, there was a large Jewish community in Yathrib. And the Jewish community there used to criticize the Arabs who lived there. The Arabs largely worshipped idols. And of course, their religion was very backward because they devoted their time to these creatures that they had built of their own hands, these symbols of stone. 
And so the Jewish community in Yathrib used to curse and revile those idols and ridicule them. But in Islam, it's very important for us to realize, even though we reject shirk, worshiping any gods beside the one God, creator in heavens, creator of the heavens and earth, Allah Almighty, yet Allah tells us in the Quran, in Surah An'am, chapter 6, وَلَا تَصُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَصُبُّوا اللَّهِ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ إِلْمٍ do not revile those whom they worship besides God Almighty, Allah. Otherwise, they will in turn revile God, Allah, out of spite and in ignorance. And so Allah Almighty tells us, when you see people who are uh, ignorant of the true beliefs revealed to the prophets in the Holy Scriptures, and they are making dua or invocation or prayers to other gods, do not curse and ridicule their gods. Do not insult and revile the symbols of their religion. And so Muslims are not allowed, for example, to curse uh, the cross or symbols of other religions, even though we disagree with that worship. Because then those people who hold those symbols sacred will be insulted and angry at Islam. And so in their ignorance, they'll say, oh, that Allah, they call Allah, Allah. Oh, Allah is a false god, and they will say very bad things and curse him, thinking that they are getting revenge for Muslims insulting their gods or their uh, objects of worship. But instead, they are insulting Allah Almighty, their own God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so it is very important for us not to behave in an ignorant way uh, and insult churches, synagogues, temples, and the symbols of other religions. Likewise, we don't insult their flags, the symbols of their nations, uh, and other things that will cause them to feel anger toward Islam and the Muslim community. The uh, Jewish community knew that there was going to be a prophet coming, predicted in the Old Testament, in the Torah, as it is called in Judaism, that there would be a prophet like unto Moses. But after Moses, Musa, peace be upon him, uh, received a complete revelation in law from God Almighty and established his people on a firm foundation of law and order. After that, all the prophets who came did not bring a new law, a new order of civilization, but they simply reaffirmed the Torah of Moses. Even Christ, in his lifetime, practiced the Torah of Moses. He reformed aspects of the teaching of Moses, as did other prophets before him. But he did not completely uh, start over with a new revelation and a new law from God Almighty. So everybody knew that there was a prophet predicted in the Bible who was yet to come. And they used to boast, when that prophet comes, we're going to follow him and we are going to fight you ignorant uh, pagans, and they used to, of course, abuse the people of Yathrib. And so when the people of Yathrib were in Mecca, and some of them heard this message of the Prophet, they said, oh, we should follow him before our neighbors, the Jewish tribes of Yathrib. And they went back to their friends and neighbors and said, this is the man the Jews were telling us about. And they were threatening us. So do not let them uh, enter into his faith and belief before we do. And so slowly, the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, started to spread among the people of Yathrib. And instead of ridiculing this message, people in Yathrib used to take it very seriously. 
and think about it very carefully. They were already mentally prepared for this message uh, and they were open. They had been fighting a civil war for many years. The two biggest clans were Aus and Khazraj. And they had feuds going back. None of them could hardly even remember what was the cause of this civil war in Medina. But they were tired of war and bloodshed. And people thought, perhaps this new message could bring us back together and unite our people. There were many things in Medina which were very different from Mecca. Mecca was a wealthy mercantile center, a center of trade, international hub of the trading caravans. Medina, on the other hand, was an agricultural oasis, a place for cultivation of dates, the beautiful uh, and nutritious uh, special fruit of the Arabian desert. Mecca was ruled by its successful elite, the descendants of Abraham, the Quraysh, while Medina was ruled uh, by two conflicting tribes, Aus and Khazraj, who were engaged in bloody civil war. Mecca attracted the pilgrims from all over Arabia and beyond, while in Medina there was religious diversity uh, among the Arab pagans also lived large clans, several different clans that followed Judaism in some form, the religion revealed in the Torah and the other prophets found in what uh, the Jews call the Tanakh and the Christians call the Old Testament. Finally, the Quraysh feared that by following the Prophet Muhammad, people would no longer need their leadership and they would lose their privileges and their exclusive position among the Arabs. While in Yathrib, because people were already divided, their city was basically a failure because it was immersed in constant feuding and warfare. And so for them, there was a hope that Islam, by following the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would have a hope for healing the rift and division and reforming the condition of their people. So Yathrib, was a very different environment and had very different needs than Mecca. And they were more receptive and were able to seriously consider the message of Islam as a message of mercy from Allah Almighty that would unite them in their religious diversity and also prevent them from the bloody civil wars and civil strife that they had endured for many, many years. So leading up to the Hijra of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see that the people in what would soon be called Medina Ta Nabi, the city of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, had been spiritually, mentally prepared to receive this message. And so although the Prophet Muhammad loved his homeland and loved Makkah, as did his companions, yet there was a real expectation that they would have to leave. We'll go back to a break now and we'll be back shortly. Salaamu Alaikum. I love you my prophet and sing your praise and follow your sunnah prophetic way. Amazing stories. 
In this program, we get to know about people of the past whose stories were mentioned in the Islamic tradition and related by the Prophet, peace be upon him. That verily us, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we tell you about the best of the stories. We tell you about the best of the stories. When we narrate a story, when we read a story, when we try to benefit from a story, what we are trying to do in reality is to go back through the steps, through the different parts and sections of this story until the story is actually completed and that we can take the actual benefit directly from the story. Sheikh Lutfi will narrate these stories in his program Amazing Stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one of the lands to come closer, the destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one whole city to come closer, to move closer to this dead person. And sing your praise and follow your sunnah prophetic way. Welcome back. Salaam alaikum. We're talking about the uh, prelude to the hijra of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. The first group from Yathrib to meet the Prophet was a group of six men from Khazraj, one of the two main clans of Yathrib. And they met the Prophet at a place called Aqaba, which is nearby the uh, Jamra in Medina, which is called the uh, uh, large Jamra, the place of the stoning during the day of Eid, Eid al-Adha, the Feast of Sacrifice, at the climax of the pilgrimage to Mecca. Till this day there is a small, old-fashioned, simple mosque marking this important spot for the history of Islam. And so the people met the Prophet, listened to his message, and they said, Perhaps Allah may unite our people through you, O Muhammad. We will go back and talk to them, and then we will return to you uh, next year, insha'Allah. If Allah unites us through you, there will be no one on earth dearer and more beloved to us than you. Within one year of that first meeting at Aqaba, Islam had entered into every home of the Arab people in Medina. The next year was the first bay'ah, the first oath of allegiance or pledge of allegiance, when 12 men of Yathrib met the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, at the Hajj or the pilgrimage season. And they pledged to the Prophet that they would worship only one God, practice Tawheed or monotheism. They would only worship Allah. They would avoid evil and they would do good. And they would uh, practice the basic teachings of Islam. It's narrated from Ubada ibn al-Samit that he said, we pledged to the Messenger of Allah that night because it was dark, it was secret. We will not associate any partners with Allah. That is, we will not worship any other being besides our Creator. We will not steal. We will not commit adultery or sexual impropriety. We will not kill our own children as the Arabs used to bury, bury their daughters alive. We will not make false accusations. And we will not disobey the Prophet in what is right. And the Prophet said to them, If you fulfill this pledge, you will have Jannah, you will have Paradise. If you omit any of it, if you fail to keep part of this pledge, and you are punished in this world, 
that will be a kafara or atonement for you. And so Allah will forgive you. But if you conceal your sin until the day of judgment, then it's up to Allah, it is up to God to decide. If He wants to punish you, He may punish you. And if He wants to forgive you, He may forgive you. That means we have to make tawbah or tawbah nasuh, sincere repentance to Allah before we die. As soon as we commit a sin, we should seek forgiveness for that sin. This is narrated in the two most authentic collections of the Prophet's hadith, those of Bukhari and Muslim. This oath or pledge of allegiance was the foundation of Medina. And so gradually, the city known as Yathrib became known as the city of the Prophet, the city of Islam. And it became the model which all Muslims have based their lives, their communities and civilizations upon that model of Medina. So the Prophet wasallam sent Mus'ab ibn Umair to Medina to guide and teach people. And he was very, very successful. And so in less than one year, he came back to the Prophet wasallam and informed him of the success his da'wah, his invitation had enjoyed in Yathrib. And so the next pilgrimage, the next year at the Hajj, there was a second bay'ah, or oath of allegiance. Those who had recently embraced Islam in Medina felt true concern. They were very sincere. They were concerned for their new brothers in Islam in Mecca. Now to them, Mecca was almost a foreign country. Their city, even though it was only 200 miles from Mecca, yet to them that was their own country. And Mecca was another country. But their new brothers in Islam and sisters in Islam who were suffering in Mecca uh, held a position dear to their hearts. They loved them more than their own countrymen and their own relatives in Yathrib. On that year, the second pledge was attended by 70 men from Medina. And they arrived uh, secretly to Aqaba. Some of them singly, some of them in pairs. But they came at night so that they would not be caught by Quraysh or people spying on the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. They pledged to hear and obey in times of difficulty and times of ease, to obey the commandment of the Prophet Muhammad, no matter how hard, and to com com command what is good and decent, al-amr bil-ma'ruf, to command and uphold the standards of Islam, and to forbid uh, that which violates Islamic standards of behavior, al-nahiyu and al-munkar. And to stand up for the sake of Allah and not to fear criticism no matter who may dislike your religion, yet you will still practice your religion even though they may hate it. And to help the Prophet Muhammad and to protect him for the sake of Allah and the sake of their religion as they would protect their, themselves. If he was to migrate to Yathrib, they would protect him with their lives as they would protect their own lives, their wives and their children. And in return, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, promised them Al-Jannah, paradise. As'ad ibn Zurara was the youngest of these men who attended al Medina, uh, attended the Bay'ah, the second oath of allegiance. And he said, wait a minute. Slowly, O men of Yathrib, we came all the way over here and we already knew before we left our home that he was the prophet, he was the messenger of Allah. But to accept this pledge, 
to accept him to leave Makkah and to migrate among us is going to be interpreted as a challenge not only to Quraysh, but to all of the Arabs, because Quraysh were their leaders. And it means that people are going to be killed. Your best men may be killed because of this pledge. There's going to be a conflict because of it. So either you understand that clearly and accept it, and then your reward will be with Allah, or else, if you're afraid of your lives, then admit it openly that you're too scared, and that will be your excuse before Allah. Oh Allah, we are too scared. We know He is the Messenger. We know He is the Prophet. But we are frightened to, to be us, our own, our one town, against all of the Arabs. And so the people said, no. We are not going to abandon our pledge. We're not going to give this up. Uh, Ka'ab ibn Malik reported, we slept that night among our people. They didn't know where we were at. And when a third of the night passed, we sneaked out like the cats in the dark and went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And among those men were also two women and 70 uh, men. The Prophet's uncle Abbas accompanied him and said, we have protected him, our nephew, among his, his own people. Even though we, we, we respect him and we don't follow his religion. But he insists on joining you. If you think you can keep your promise to him and protect him, then do so. But that is your responsibility. But if you think you're going to give up hope and abandon him, then it's better for you to leave him alone now and go back home to your country. But the Prophet accepted their pledge of allegiance. But they said, O Prophet, if you become victorious and Allah grants you success of your mission, are you then going to leave us alone? And he said, No. I have pledged to be with you in Yathrib. And so the Prophet joined hands with those wonderful people, the Ansar of al Medina. May Allah Almighty bless all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When truth was lost and hearts were frozen from you, Allah came a Prophet chosen, blessed Prophet Muhammad, obedient to you. Taught us the things we ought to do He taught us for certain that you are one And that you have neither a daughter nor son He taught us to be good to our mother and father And that paradise lies under the feet of our mother I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise And follow your sunnah, prophetic ways I love you, my prophet, and sing your praise, and follow your sunnah, prophetic way.